epistasis. So the first question you might have is, what is epistasis? Well, epistasis is a circumstance where the expression of one gene is affected by the expression of one or more independently inherited genes. There are six types of epistatic interactions, but for this video we will just focus on the single recessive pathway. To, to demonstrate this concept, I have created a fictional pathway using the Labrador dog breed. In this breed, there are three main colors, black, chocolate, and yellow. For this single recessive scenario, black will be the first step in the epistatic pathway. For a dog to be black, it must, have homo it must have a homozygous recessive allele for the A locus. It doesn't matter what the B locus is doing because without the A locus showing a dominant allele, the dog won't have the ability to show the chocolate or yellow phenotype. Progressing on, if the dog has a dominant allele for the A locus, it will, show the it will have the opportunity to show the chocolate phenotype. However, this is when the B locus comes into play because if the B locus is also dominant, the dog will continue on through the, throughout the pathway and hit yellow. If the dog is just dominant for the A locus and not B, it will remain in the middle of the pathway and show the chocolate phenotype. So say we have two dogs, both of which are big A little A, big B little B. These dogs would both be yellow labs because they are dominant for both loci. If these two were to have offspring, the Punnett square I made shows us the phenotypic ratio. In the single recessive epistasis pathway, it is easiest to count up the, all the squares that are recessive for the A locus. If you were to do that, you would see that there are four in the bottom right hand corner of the table. These would all be black. Next, it would be easiest to count up all the squares with a dominant A locus, but a recessive B locus, meaning there must be a big A, but there can't be a big B. Counting these squares up, you should see that there will be three that will show the chocolate phenotype. Lastly, counting up the squares that have a big letter for both A and B loci, you will see that there is a total of nine that will reach the end of that pathway and show the yellow phenotype. In another instance, you may have a cross between a dog that is big A, little A, big B, big B, and a dog that is little A, little A, big B, little B. The first dog would be yellow and the second dog would be black. We know this because the first dog has, a dominant, has dominant alleles for both loci and the second never passes the first step in the pathway because it is recessive at the A locus. This cross would result in a different ratio as shown by the table. Highlighted are all the offspring that would, not, would show the yellow phenotype. Once again, because they are dominant at both loci. Lastly, the non-highlighted squares show all the offspring that will remain black due to them being recessive at the A locus. Thanks for watching and my sources are on the screen as well as in the description box below the video.